Hi, I'm Nicholas Lodge, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use my unicorn mold. Uh, this is a two-part mold that is part of the Nicholas Lodge collection. So unicorns are a very popular trend uh, thing at the moment, and uh, I'm going to show you how to use the unicorn horn and ear mold. Now, um, these uh, show here some cupcakes, and so this little small mold is perfect for if you make the larger size horn that I'm going to reference for obviously like a cupcake, and then you can make smaller size horns for obviously like cookies. Um, so this could be used for different size cupcakes and cookies, and uh, makes it very quick if you're making lots of these. Like if you had to make two dozen of these, this is a great way to make it. Now when we are using uh, unicorns, obviously the horn could be made in different colors, but mostly uh, people are making these in metallic. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how to use some of the Rainbow Dust Edible um, FDA compliant metallic paints and um, in gold and silver. And generally when you're making the uh, unicorn, you want to uh, start off with using gum paste. And uh, so here I'm using the Renshaw gum paste. And Renshaw gum paste is a uh, vegan product. This doesn't contain any egg whites. And when you buy this, this comes with two 250 gram packs. Um, so inside the box here, there are two foil pouches. Um, this makes it very convenient uh, to use. So you just obviously open the foil pouch, then keep it into a zip top type of bag once you have finished with it. Now when making um, the unicorn, when you're making things, and this applies to really pretty much anything you do in metallics, when you're making things in gold, you want to start off with yellow, and when you make things silver, you want to start off with gray. Um, so Renshaw also have introduced some colors in the gum paste, including a yellow. Uh, we also have in the gum paste, we have actually a red, a red gum paste. We have a green gum paste, which is lovely like moss green color, we have a nice uh, pale pink and a pale blue. So these are perfect, for example, for roses, for forget-me-nots, flowers like that. Um, and in addition to obviously the yellow. So um, if you had the pre-colored uh, Renshaw gum paste, obviously we could use this uh, for the yellow. Now as far as for the gray, you just want to take some white, uh, using some white gum paste, add a little tiny bit of black or gray uh, pro gel to this. So you could use a little bit of the black pro gel um, or gray pro gel could be added to the, um, to the white to tint it a gray color. So the reason why I would always start off with yellow or gray is that when you then paint, you're going to have a foundation to paint on. And also if you're making things like jewelry pieces or for example, even on the unicorn, if you have little areas you don't get the paint into, it's not gonna notice. If you made it in white, it would look quite different. Now when we are using the gum paste, we need to just uh, condition this. So this is some of the yellow gum paste. So you just would take out some of the gum paste. You just would break off just a little bit of your gum paste. And then we're going to condition this with a little bit of vegetable shortening or white vegetable fat. So just gonna take a little small amount of this. And we're just gonna just knead this into the paste. And so what this is gonna do, this is going to give it, as I said, malleability and workability. So it's gonna make it nice and malleable and pliable. And this is what I refer to as conditioning the gum paste. Now, so this is a vegan product. Um, when you are using the Renshaw gum paste for flour making, generally speaking, I would often add a little bit of egg white. So I would just take a little small container of fresh egg white and dip my gum paste into egg white. If you add egg white to this, it's going to give it elasticity. Of course, the product doesn't stay vegan, but it's going to give much more stretch when you're making sugar flours. But for this, we don't need to do that. Now we're gonna use a size guide. Um, so size guide is included with the mold. Um, and this is the unicorn um, horn and ear mold and part of the Nicholas Lodge collection. And uh, you can see here you have the ears and then we have also the uh, unicorn horn. And this uh, horn mold is, uh, has got a slit in it. So as you'll see, I open this up like a hot dog bun when I drop the carrot paste into this. Now, when we use the mold, uh, we're going to uh, measure with the size guide if you're making a smaller size horn, which would be suitable, I um, mean, you can see the sort of comparison of the two sizes of horn here. So the gold horn, the smaller one painted, that is actually a number seven. And then the larger horn, which is what I would use for something like a cupcake, is actually a number eight small. So when we use the size guide, I'm going to take a piece of our gum paste here, and we're just gonna measure this onto the size guide. It's a little bit bigger, so when you measure it onto the number seven hole here, 
like this, you can see there's approximately about one third below the hole and about two thirds above the top of it. Okay, so this is how we measure the paste. Now, if you're making a, um, if you're making the larger unicorn horn for a cupcake, this would be a number eight small. So that means the number eight wants to just go through the hole. So number seven size for the uh, smaller horn, number eight small, which just goes through the hole for the larger unicorn horn. Once we have got that measured, now if you're making several of these, just keep these underneath a little pot. So you just would keep the little balls of paste underneath a little pot like that that stops it drying out. Going to use some cornstarch. This is just a little cornstarch pouch. So we've already conditioned your gum paste. So now what we're going to do here is going to make this into a carrot shape. So just going to make it into a carrot shape. So you see how you're going to make a carrot shape like this. Don't worry too much about the length of it, but this obviously wants to be a little bit shorter than the mold because when we make the smaller, so this is about um, approximately about two thirds of the length of the mold, okay? Um, but this is gonna make the smaller one. When we make the larger eight small size, that will actually fit the mold. So you almost make your carrot the length of your piece of, of your mold. You wanna dust this with just a little um, cornstarch, which you can just do on your hand like this. All right, and then we're going to take the mold and then we're gonna open up the mold here. So you're gonna open this up like a hot dog bun and you're just gonna just drop your paste into the mold. So you see that just goes into the end of the mold here like so, and just gonna just press this together, all right? And you can see this is gonna be a little bit short of the top. Then using, um, using here a large stick, just sort of something just to press this down. You could use a ball tool or whatever. This is just going to press this down just put a press around in the mold, okay? And then we're going to take a piece of uh, spaghetti. Now, I'm using here just regular spaghetti. Um, because you're using this onto a cookie or a cupcake, you wanna make sure everything is totally edible. And so that's why I wouldn't use, for example, wire or toothpicks. It's always very important to remember if you're putting things into a cupcake or a cookie, everything is edible. So I'm gonna take about a two inch, about a five centimeter piece of spaghetti here. All right, so this is gonna be the piece I'm gonna use. And then you can either use uh, two products. You can either use a little piping gel, all right? Or you can also use some of the Nicholas Lodge Super Bond. My Super Bond is a very, very thick glue. We use this to attach heavier decorations to a cake. So either of those products could be used. So piping gel or Super Bond. So you're just gonna put your, so this is gonna make this sticky. And when you actually put this into a cupcake, because of the natural oil in the cupcake, uh, from the butter or the oil, it will soften this down, but this, this structural integrity of the um, spaghetti will stay strong. So this makes a really good su support system. We're gonna push this into the horn here. So you can see about half of this has gone into the horn. And then you're just gonna just open up the mold and just gonna let pop that out like so, okay? And then sometimes when you're doing this, you might have like a little bit of flashing. That would mean that when you press it in the mold, where the mold joins here, you might squash a bit of paste in. So you just pull that off with your fingers. But you see, this is gonna give you a beautiful uh, little horn. Now, when you're making larger unicorn horns, those are very easy to make freehand, but this is a very quick way to make the little unicorn horn piece. And then you just would put that into a little styrofoam uh, piece of flour or styrofoam cake dummy, uh, just to dry a little bit. Now, when you're making the ears, the ears um, could be made, for example, like on the um, cupcake here. Uh, these ones were made in yellow to match the horn, if you're gonna paint them in metallic. Uh, when I made the cookie here with the silver um, horn and the silver ears, I used gray for the horn and gray for the ears. Um, here, for example, on the, this one, I've got white ears with pink, where I've used the food art pen and then here, I've actually got a Christmas one here, so like Santa Unicorn, I did that with white and then I used the uh, metallic, green metallic paint and then painted inside the ears with green. So there's lots of options there. Now when you make the ears, we're gonna use number five size on the size guide, all right? Sorry, uh, number six size on the size guide, so number six here, all right? So you're gonna again, so you can see is one third below, two thirds above, so number uh, six size, so you would make one number six size ball of paste, and then you'd make another number six size ball of paste. Remember, this is also gum paste. Now, the reason why would you recommend using gum paste, especially for the horn, is that if you use fondant, um, it's gonna be a little bit soft. But the other alternative would be you could take some yellow wrench or fondant 
and you could add some um, tylose powder to it to firm it up uh, so you could use it in the mold. But because the gum paste is pre-made and ready available, um, I prefer to use the gum paste. So I'm going to use the number six size here. It's going to make this into a little, like a little, almost like a little cone shape. A little bit of cornstarch onto there. I'm just going to press this into the mold and you're just going to repeat this on the second one. Okay, and then you're going to just pop this into the into here, like so. All right, so it's going to prep your ears, and you're going to take these out. Now you could use these for all sorts of things. I mean, when you're doing, for example, little piggy cupcakes, you could make these in pink for little pig ears. You could use this for bunny rabbit's ears if you stretch them a little bit. So there's lots of ways of using those. Now, as far as finishing these off. Um, these are the uh, metallic paints. Uh, these are part of the, um, an FDA compliance. So those of you who are watching this from the US, uh, this is a range of a gold and a silver and a pearl. And then we have a pink and a blue. And then we have a green and a purple. So these are really amazing colors. So these are a totally FDA compliant range of metallics from Rainbow Dust. And uh, so obviously the gold and silver are the two colors I've used here. So that is one option. Um, so if you're using, um, going to use the pens, the paints. Generally you're going to just take the, just give this a little shake, all right? And these are water soluble, so that means your paintbrush, you're just going to use uh, water to, uh, to uh, clean this up. So we're going to take the, here, uh, just going to take the gold, and I'm going to just then paint the unicorn horn. Okay, so you're just going to use the, the gold paint and just going to just literally just paint this, but just give this a little shake. But you see how because of the uh, starting off with a yellow base, you're going to get a beautiful uh, gold. And as I said, this is totally edible. This is another thing you have to take into consideration when you're doing um, obviously things to be eaten and consumed. You want to make sure everything is totally edible. Okay, um, so that is one option. That is to use the pen and a paintbrush and then you just up the paintbrush and the paint and then you just would wash this brush so just use some warm water to brush that. Now the second alternative is to use the click twist brushes. Uh, now these also come in the same range of colors so these come in the gold, in the silver, in the pearl, in the pink and blue and the green and purple. So this is pre-loaded with the uh, paint, same paint I've just been using with and this is a click twist brush. So here, all you do is you're going to use the little end part here. So you're just going to just twist that just a little bit and you'll see like the gold will come into the end. And so I'll show finishing this off with this one. So you see then what you do, you're just going to just paint this. So this can also be used in exactly the same way. All right, so, so one of them is using the paint in a pot and then the other one is of course just using it straight from the brush. But uh, this, is, uh, this is great to use, like for example, when you do pearls, I use the pearl version of this uh, to then just use it in the brush. It's very convenient to go around the bottom of the pearls on a cake. And then you're just going to put the lid onto this. And then when you want to, uh, you know, need some more gold in here, you just twist it a little bit. Don't twist it too much, just a little tiny bit to dispense some of the gold. So you see how that's going to give you the, um, the, the beautiful uh, effect for the, uh, for the horn of the unicorn. And then with the silver one, it would be exactly the same, either using the brush or the paint uh, to paint over the silver. As far as the ears go, um, the ears, you can use these. These are some dry ears. So of course, like if you're doing metallic, you just would paint those over or use your brush over the top of it, your click twist brush. And then when you're using the, you can use the food art pens, all right? So for example, with the pink ears here, uh, those ones were just done uh, with the food art pen. So these are the uh, Rainbow Dust food art pens. Now, again, a very innovative product. And uh, this is wonderful to use because the uh, food art pens come in uh, these different colors. Again, this is the FDA compliant range. Uh, those of you watching this from obviously Europe, Rainbow Dust have a mixed extended range in the metallics and also the pens in the UK and in Europe. Uh, but here in the United States, uh, these come in black, in royal blue, baby blue, pink, green, red, yellow, and purple unique part about these pens is these are double-ended. Um, so one end of the pen is going to be sort of larger and then the other end of the pen is going to be super fine, uh, like almost like an ultra-fine Sharpie. So this is really good for fine detail work. 
And you can see you can use these on cookies, you can use them as embroidery on cakes, so you can do all different types of designs with them. Um, so if you feel more comfortable with a pen than a paintbrush, this is a great alternative. Um, so here you can see this is the, the regular size end, and then this is the fine end here. So you see it's really, really fine. So when you're just doing really fine like line work and things like that, this is great. So when you're using this, so it's a good idea to have your ears uh, dry. So these are some dry ears. And then all you're going to do here, you just would just outline with your, your pen. So you see I've just outlined with my, with my pen there. And I'm just going to then just fill in with my pen like so. Okay, so I'm just going to just fill in that little area there. All right, and so you just would continue with your ears. So you just would make, you know, couple of ears, obviously whatever, whatever color you want, but this also could be used in the springtime for little bunny, bunny ears if you're doing a little bunny cupcake, adorable for Easter time. Um, and then when I did the, for example, here on the Christmas one, all right, so this is a sort of Santa unicorn here. Uh, what I actually did there is I did the ears in white, and then I just used the, um, the green uh, paint, metallic paint, so this is a beautiful green color. So I just used that with a sort of a slightly finer paintbrush. So I just used a small, smaller paintbrush than I did with the gold, and I just painted in the ears. So I just took the metallic and then just painted into the ears like this. Another alternative is you could also take a piece of contrast color like some pink fondant or some green fondant and make a little small carrot. And so what you'd actually do is you would just press a little small carrot of a pink paste into there as well. Um, so it's just giving you options. So that is the, um, as I said, the uh, unicorn mold. So a really fun and innovative product. And as I said, can be used not just for unicorns, but also for other things as well, for making little ears and leaves and things as well. And this also can even be used for a seashell. If you just uh, put the paste in there and then pop it out, you can use that as a sort of a spiral seashell as well. And you could hollow out the end with a dog bone or a Dresden tool. So I hope you'll have fun and enjoy using this product.